The purpose of this video is for those people if that may be in the same situation I was. You have a Samba-based LDAP server, or perhaps this would also apply to any LDAP server, and despite your best efforts, you weren't getting connected to that LDAP server. Let me show you what I found out. For starters, you need to know the IP address of your device. I use a program called Advanced IP Scanner to quickly scan the network. You could find that on the display panel of the device itself. But by running a program like this, I can quickly see my Canon printer has an IP address of 10.220. So that'll be step one. Step two, open up a browser and enter that IP address in your browser followed by 8000. That's going to bring you your Image Runner Advanced uh, UI. We're going to go over to the right and click on Settings and Registration. And then in this obscure area called License and Other, we're going to find Remote Operation Settings and you're going to want to make sure that's turned on. Now, you can also set a password. I had a password in there previously. I think I'm going to just delete that password by hitting OK. That should result in no password. So now, you should be able to remotely operate that, which is what I want to do. You may want to do this from the panel itself. I find it easier to do this from the comfort of my computer. Okay, now we're going to close. Now, uh, let me talk about LDAP for just a second. I have spent countless times in this UI, or you can do it on the, on the device itself, where you see these tutorials that tell you go into Set Destination, Register LDAP Server, and Register. And then you fill out all the possible variations of this to register your LDAP Server, and none of them work. I mean, you can use security, you can not use security, you can uh, TLS or not. T it doesn't matter what version of the LDAP server you choose. It doesn't matter what position to start the search, which, by the way, is your, your search string like CN equal office, CN equal a DC equal this, and so on, comma separated. It doesn't matter what you put in there. When you hit check connection, it never connects. Well, it turns out... This is only necessary if the other means prove to be unsuccessful. So let's talk about those other means. I'll go ahead and close this UI. Now, for this portion, there is at least one, probably two pieces of software that you need to download. One of them is the driver for your printer itself. Now, in my case, uh, my research has told me that what you're looking for is the driver that has that UFRII uh, or LL or whatever it is. I'm guessing it's II. That's the one you want for either your 64-bit or 32-bit operating system. There's going to be a lot of drivers in many cases. That's the one you want to grab. In addition, you're going to want to get this guy right here. Uh, it's the remote viewer for... Canon and uh, that's a downloadable product. I'll give you an example here Canon Remote Operation Viewer and you can download it right here 32 and 64 bit. Now you'll be able to control your printer remotely because you've set the stage by turning it on and now we're going to click on that viewer right here. And it uh, you'll, it'll ask you for the IP address of your uh, printer. You'll need to type that in there. And since I've just removed the password, it lets me in straight away. Now, what you're looking at here is, in fact, the same thing you would look at if you were to walk up to the device itself. I had a couple things that I had changed, and it's asking me if I want to save them. I'm getting past that. So this is the kind of thing you would look at if you walked into the device yourself. Well, walk up to the device yourself. Okay, to start things off, we're going to get to the scan and send area. And you'll see one of the things that you have is your address book, which you may already have set up. 
this particular client does have it already set up, I'm going to click on Address Book, and you'll see there's a variety of things in there already. Uh, a couple of these I have set up personally uh, on the new model that I'm about to teach you. Um, some of them were there before. Let me start this process out by deleting some of the ones I have in there. Now previously they were not using an LDAP server. Uh, they were just using a, a path to something that they called a server and uh, but it was just another uh, system. So they've got things going into a folder called CMC scans and accounting and this is for the accounting user. Uh, yet if we go to uh, this user Andy we see they were still in CMC scans. Andy, the problem is everybody in the organization can see these folders. Well, that's obviously not ideal. You see they're not using any usernames or passwords to access that information. We're going to start by changing these. So the host name will now be the IP address of the server, followed by the folder within the server that we want this scan to be deposited into. The folder path is going to be a subfolder that we create after this. And we'll OK that. The username will be the username that we know has access to that directory in our Samba and or LDAP environment. And that, in this case, that username is the same as the directory name. All right, and we'll check that connection. And as you can see, that works. And it is checking the accounting PC, that password, and making sure all the ducks line up. Now I'm going to take you to the server side for just a moment so that you can see. I do an LSL. There's all the users for this particular client. And if I do an LSL for the accounting PC, you can see there's nothing in there. It's an empty folder right now. So we're going to consider this accounting one all set up. And now we're going to put that to use. We're in the scan and send area. We've got this one selected. We're going to say OK. <clears throat> OK. Now we want to hit the big green button on the right hand side. You know, there's a tendency to want to hit scan and send again, but that would be redundant. That's how we got there. Click the big green button on the right hand side, just like you were standing in front of the unit. And choose the letter size. Now, since I'm scanning remotely, I know there's no paper on the scanner. It's just going to scan nothing, but it will actually put it through the physical motion of scanning. Okay, we're going to now, it has finished the scanning. We're ready to send it. I'm going to uh, split the screen a little bit here. We'll bring this over again. Nothing in there right now. Start sending. And presumably, it is done. And there you have it. You notice when I take a look at this directory, it now has a folder called scans. And if I look inside of scans, you see that there's a PDF file. So that's how that works. You don't need to go through all the other LDAP settings. Uh, the idea behind that is that if this doesn't work, that is how you can register it and evidently, uh, presumably, connect the dots. Now, maybe there's more to it than that. Maybe there's another benefit that, uh, that we're not realizing at this point. But I can tell you I've tried everything under the sun, and it simply won't connect to LDAP. But this connects to LDAP seamlessly, and ultimately, that's the goal. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you connect those dots in your world.